Mommy! No. I can't- I can't- Mad Mad. Bring her back. I don't know where she is. Try harder. Nick! Oh, blah, blah. Don't- <laughs> don't show him his dead dad. It's not- it's not polite. Who's a dead daddy? Dead you! Hello, bullet in the wall. Yeah, that's- Okay, so- okay, wait, hold on. So, it- okay, wait, 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 wait. I know how Was this is going to go. Was that the same bullet? It's gonna be that Edgeworth thinks he killed his dad, but he didn't kill his dad. He's the one that caused the bolt hole in the window, and Yanni Yogi really did kill his dad. So at the end, Edgeworth is gonna be all happy because he's like, I, "This whole time I thought I killed my dad. I'm really glad that I didn't." It's gonna be that. But then how did he, how did his dad die? Uh, Yanni Yogi strangled him or something. He don't know. He's got blood all around his neck. It doesn't seem like a bullet. You you think Edgeworth would know about what the murder the method of murder was in his dad's death? <laughs> Yeah, but in in this game, would I really be surprised if he didn't? I'd be a little surprised. It's, he built his life around this one thing. Let's go talk to Mr. Grossberg. Maybe he'll tell us more about the DL6 incident. Maybe he'll say... <laughs> he, he wasn't shot. What are you talking about? What? What? No, he had a heart attack. He, uh, Edgeworth wasn't even there. He's and like he making fell up directly his on memory. this meatball sub. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> he had a heart attack and fell neck first onto a meatball sub. <laughs> you know, with the amount of people who've died in the world, I'm sure that's happened at least once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to remember what the fuck was that? Where. Oh, were we playing Death Stranding or something where you just did like an impression of like a dude or whatever? And you're like, uh, uh, I'll have a meatball sub. <laughs> I don't remember the context for it anymore, but it was just that, like. That sounds like it. You randomly just did that. And it was like the funniest shit because it was so specific and weird. <laughs> because, yeah, because men like, like to eat meatball subs. You just right? had that ready in your head. <laughs> hi, hi, I'll have a meatball uh, sub. Meatball sub please. <laughs> and I was like, what? Is that not what all of you men order all the time? We might have been talking about voice acting, like me, like when I do, like, <laughs> when I, like, I, like I'll do girl voices, and I'll have like, I have like two total. Cause it's hard to have that much range, and you like, and you, I think you might have been like, "This is my boy voice." <laughs> oh, is... people, so <laughs> <laughs> that's probably right. <laughs> yeah, that's like I, my male voices are like, <laughs> or like. Da -da 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 -da. Meatball sub. Meatball sub. <laughs> meatball sub. Hey, God, I gotta get into character. Meatball sub. Meatball, meatball sub. Meatball sub. Okay. Me meatball me sub. Uh, meatball. Okay, I found I'm it. Ready. It's right here. It's this rage. <laughs> meatball sub. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get in character. <laughs> Mr. Crossberg. <laughs> Do you have a meatball, meatball sub? <laughs> Hello there. I like to order meatball subs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello there. Oh, what's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. Uh, why, my why? Just calm down and tell me what happened, huh? It, it's Mr. Edgeworth. He. <laughs> I see. The meatball sub killings. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 flashback. This is the flashback chapter. <laughs> it is like the flashback chapter. We've or not only do we have flashbacks to all these tragic past history things with all the different characters, we had we flashed back to a thing Edgeworth said earlier today, twice already. <laughs> that was today. Oh yeah, that was today. I can tell you that was today. Back to it twice. <laughs> when he's like, once I had a nightmare. I, I, <laughs> but then I won't explain it. Yeah, cause, yeah, like I said, we just walked away. We were like, hey, <laughs> tell us later, I guess. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have a meatball sub. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all men do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> today, in confusing stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll go on a date with some guy, and I'm like, you're gonna order the meatball sub, aren't you? <laughs> Prove me wrong. So, so Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. It's only a dream. Only a dream. Also, spreading this to everyone seems unwise. Yeah, no. Don't do that. I wonder. What? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Oh, well... Also, uh, consider this. Yoki quite certainly holds a deep grudge against Miles Edgeworth. So deep, 
he'd want to frame him for murder. That leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream, it was real. As you imagined. <laughs> I don't know how to use this. Yeah, the dumbest yeet of all time. <laughs> I'm only good at you. There's no negative outcomes that can possibly happen if I do this. Oops, I'm an orphan. <laughs> it's like, what the? What a choice you made that day. Oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Have you never seen one of these before? We're finally seeing it full frame too, instead of a little flash. Like we can just enjoy this. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much to take in. <laughs> Is he like, okay, if you take it out of context, and it almost looks like he's like trying to catch it before it falls to the ground. Like he's like, no, that'll go off and kill my dad. <laughs> but see, that's not. That's too smart for what's like actually happening. Like he relives the moment over and over again in his dreams and he always tries to like dive to catch the gun before it I lands. I can stop and kills it! I dad. can stop it! It's like an anxiety dream. Oh gosh. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired, and the dude was done. N no I don't believe it. Yogi was suspected of murder. And his case was a, as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. Career as a bailiff. Oh, so that's why I ruined his life. Then. Uh, is a bailiff really like big like life goals career? Like man, hey, man. if I lose my bailiff job, I'm ruined. <laughs> I'll never, uh, I'll never work again at anything on this level. But you probably need like a security guy. You probably actually need some like credentials to be like a lot. Like I think you need some law credentials to be a bailiff. It, yeah. Bailiff probably makes more money than I fucking do. Yeah. Thus, he sought revenge on Miles Edward. This was his last chance, of course, with the Statue of Limitations so close. But the Statue of Limitations doesn't matter if he's just gonna frame him for a new murder. <laughs> Seems kind of dumb. Yeah. He framed him for a new murder and then <laughs> ran away so that he couldn't actually get Miles Edward convicted of the, of the original crime. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, why don't the you- The Statue of Limitations seems irrelevant. That's what I'm telling you. I'm like, why doesn't he just get him in trouble for the original crime? That seems like much less work yeah. than staging, staging a whole nother crime. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? <clears throat> he was a defense attorney without a peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about Von it. Karma. Oh. Your, your mentor, Mia <clears throat> Fey. My sister. Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. I like how this is just fucking common knowledge that he literally makes shit up. And yet- Creates false evidence and he's still allowed to practice. <laughs> like, yeah, the judge just like looks the other way and is like- He is an idiot and, the maybe, judge is and he so might be the only judge stupid. in Japan. Apparently, because we we don't get any other ones. As re the result, he has a perfect win record in court. It's really disgusting that Edgeworth thinks he demands respect. When this common know, it makes, knowledge, it makes that, me kind of sad. It's common knowledge. He just makes shit up and like fr basically frames people for murder. Well, sometimes when someone's like your mentor, you have a hard time like looking at them in a way that is more realistic. I can't lose another daddy. <laughs> yeah, he's my new dad. <laughs> To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And? He lost. He died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. Oh, that, okay, so now we're getting our answers finally. This, this was, I feel like this is confusingly relayed. It might just be because we're always told everything in fragments, so it's like you, you, you're left to like infer what a lot of shit was going on. So like, they were just in an elevator for reasons, unrelated to absolutely anything we've ever heard of. Mm -hmm. And then a random earthquake strikes, and then he gets killed, and then in that prosecution is when me, uh... Yeah. See, I knew that Mommy already. is called. Yeah. I was like, Mia, Maya, and Mom. <laughs> 
I don't know her name. What's her name? Misty, another M. There you go. Misty's a cool name. Yeah, it's confusing because it, it felt like they were, because they, I think they said they were coming out of a trial. No, and see, and so like it felt like they were coming out of the one that we were already being introduced with, but well, I guess DL six DL six incident was yeah that one yeah they keep referring to this whole <clears throat> thing as the DL six incident so like I was already, like I'm I thought it was this already because they this is like in itself the DL six incident it's yeah. not like the previous incident was the DL six incident you know yeah I thought they were I thought they were finishing the DL six trial was when this the murder happened. But this is that this murder is the DL6 incident. Yeah. Spirit medium. <laughs> sure. You know, I, do people okay? What? I was gonna say in in reality I know that spirit mediums have been used in court cases before. Is that allowed still? Because I would throw I hope, a I, hope I would throw a fucking fit if I was in a trial, my life depended on it, that and someone called like, up a spirit medium. That feels like some some old timey shit, like throwing women into an asylum with hysteria. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the women's disease. <laughs> Gosh, that thing's contagious. Damn. Don't fucking touch me, I'm contagious. Yeah. <laughs> I got those cooties. Half of all the population's got this woman disease. <laughs> yeah. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> when I hear stuff like that, I'm like, sure, we probably did use it. To, we probably did use spirit mediums in court trials. Fuck it. See, I know for sure. I know for sure this. I think I'm pretty sure this has happened. This is a thing that existed at one point. I just, just know a right bummer, now. Bummer, because it's just they're so fraud. I they're all frauds. Would throw the biggest fit. I call. Yeah. Uh, I would like. Yeah, I'd be very, very, very unhappy. <laughs> the stand. That's a, the sta That's a horrible standard of evidence. I'm getting a reading. Something with a. An M? For murder? An, an M or September? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a dog? <laughs> I, I, I was born in September. I have a dog. <gasps> oh my god. You're the murderer. Oops. No. <laughs> but I'm the defendant. I'm, I'm just in the audience, man. Yeah, and I'm, an, I'm just a juror. It's the bailiff. <gasps> oh gosh. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Faye. What? <laughs> My mom's name was Misty. More flashbacks. I am Greg. I am Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Straight to it. The one who shot me was the bailiff Yaniyogi. You're trying to figure out how to use that uh, this rap sour patch. I just want one of these sour punch. Straw. Sorry, I'm trying to eat a sour punch straw, and I was trying not to open the wrapper. <laughs> I'm always mad that they serve stuff like that in theaters because it's like the wrappers are the worst. It's like, why don't you have like cardboard versions of these products that well, you can serve in, you, in you, theaters? You get the cardboard. So, okay, like I'll get like a Raisinets, right? They come in cardboard, but they have a plastic bag inside the cardboard. Yeah. Which pisses me off. I'm like, wait, like all this extra packaging. No, I, I get red vines, but what I do is I, I take the, uh, I open the wrapper on the way into the theater and throw it away. And then you just have this cardboard tray full of red vines inside. But what if you want to save the rest for later? No. no. <laughs> they are gonna get, they're going in. <laughs> I have I have two and a half hours to get to this pack of red vines and I it will not it will not last. <laughs> I try my best to open everything when like the initial um like opening of the movie starts where it's like showing me the production companies and stuff. Yeah. Because I don't want to open it before then because I'll start eating them during the previews. So yeah. I'll like wait until the last minute. I'll like once it's just like universal and stuff, I'll be like I'll open everything really fast. Yet yeah, Yogi was found innocent. That's when my mother left us. Oh, everyone called her a fraud. It turned out she was a fraud at being a mom. She oh, abandoned us. That is kind of a fucked up thing to do. Yes. <laughs> she better be dead. <laughs> it's really shitty. Just like, deuces, small he's, children, he's you're not alone. Like, how many people lost their parents in this one case? <laughs> Jesus. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Did she say whether or not she had a dad? I don't remember. I don't remember. Yet, now that I think about it, seems the only one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. No. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. Well, he lied to protect his son. Mm. Or, Misty is a fraud. <laughs> or. Oh my god. Uh, it what like I guess that Edgeworth didn't actually make land the bullet that killed his dad, and Maybe. he. 
Because I feel like the game gonna, is going to relieve him of this <laughs> mental burden by having this, it not be this him. This goddamn mustache. It's like the Pringles man. <laughs> I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. Oh ho, so this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney, but he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. What does that mean? Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. Oh, so he always thought his people were guilty. But he got his client found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won an innocent verdict for no one but himself. I... But what does it matter? Yeah, this sounds... Grossberg, you're not answering this, this question. This is a weird line. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Because everybody knows this lawyer only defends guilty people? But yeah, my is, is that Is that the idea? Huh? That's terrible. You'll understand soon enough. What? You understand when you're older, son. What? I'm like, wait, what? I'm confused. But like, how does any lawyer get a reputation for only defending guilty people? Unless, unless that's just a, a reputation that all defense attorneys have, because 99% of cases end in, in guilty verdicts. That, that would just be how everyone th thinks everyone is, including us. Why aren't we getting big backlash? So yeah, so you, you have like these lawyers who are known for getting, for winning their cases no matter what, but they're not seen as being. But they're all prosecutors. Villainous. It, like, no, no one like no one like thinks of these people as being villains, but they obviously are. Like yeah. these people are getting. He's dressed like Dracula. Persecutions, <laughs> no matter what it takes, but they're like considered heroes in their field. And this guy is defending people that he himself doesn't even believe are innocent, and always he's like he's winning those cases on people that are basically difficult or like basically guilty. And so, like, the, it's, also, the it's judge... also a weird moral line to draw, just because like he's a defense attorney whose job it is to be a defense attorney really well, and he does that, and we're supposed to we're weirdly framing him like he was like unjust in his pursuit of doing his job correctly. But this, this game is already trying to outline the idea that a defense attorney is a hero and a prosecutor is a villain. So it's like by doing that, you're, you're muddying this even more. They're making a weird like anti-hero de like defense attorney. Because this is already question like their, their method of making prosecution prosecutors seem like villains and defense lawyers seem like heroes is already like already ambiguous and not doesn't make a lot of sense. But so them doing this is extra weird. It like muddies yeah. the water even more because now you have a person who's supposed to be a defense attorney, which you've defined as being a hero, but a villainous he's like a bad one, I guess. It's like and, and then and then you have like Edgeworth who's like a good a good villain, like even what? though he's doing bad things. <laughs> Sometimes. Like the, but that guy did right the right thing for the wrong reason. He didn't feel it right. He didn't feel it correctly. And that's why you should look down on him anyway or something, apparently. <clears throat> Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before, a long time ago. Though, whose handwriting was this? I would never remember that. Um. When am I Fun work? karma. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait. We have no reason to think Von Karma is even tied to the original case, do we? No, but it's like if you just want to blame him. I'm going to say it's, it's Yanni Yogi. Because he, he, he mementoed it. I'm telling you, he mementoed Why would he see Yanni Yogi's handwriting? I don't know, because he, he worked in the courtroom. I mean, I don't know why Bailiff would ever write anything, but like, in a court case, but... Miles Edgeworth framing himself. But that would, yeah, that'd be a twist, all right. Maybe it was Yanni Yogi? Yanni Yogi? You claim he wrote himself this letter, then followed his own instructions? Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess that would be what happened. The <laughs> rope! Perhaps you think Mr. Yogi has a split personality, huh? Yeah. Was that not clear? 
Well, no, he's just senile. We've we've, he's senile. He, we've li well, we've also, even on top of his age issues and things like that, we've established that the, the idea of him having memory problems that were brought on by the sleep, the, 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 uh, lack the, of air, air. the air deprivation causing permanent brain damage. So, like, it's not a weird thing. Well, it's not a split personality, though. Yeah, but he, it's like, it could be split memories. And what? which memories he's he he has at a given time could affect his personality. I mean, that's not that's or not, or at least his motivations. That's not how split personality works. I just no, think he has ba is, a bad memory. But this is anime. I, I, I know. <laughs> this I know. Is, this, I, I am fully in the world of like, in in fiction, especially cartoon fiction. All interpretations of how brains work are out the window, and <laughs> it's just like whatever crazy mechanic they want to throw at you. I think that's definitely a possibility, yes. Hmm. hmm. No, I think not. I, I do not know this yogi in, that, in any case. There's no way I would recognize this Oh man, I was wrong you about my memento. You don't, you don't know? You never knew the bailiff? Well... <laughs> hmm. Oh, right. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you again. You have no idea who wrote probably Manfred von Karma then. Oh my god, he's secretly the bad guy. Oh, what? I would have never guessed with all of his evil... Villainy. Yeah. <laughs> his villainness. His villain-sona. Hmm. Oh, so, so, okay, so, so now what we're spinning is that von Karma is manipulating this guy into being... He's manipulating him into... Wait, but why would well, Von weird, Karma he, want to persecute his own? It is weird because it's his pupil, yeah. Uh, uh, Edgeworth thought was his friend. I'm just, I'm just ready for Von Karma to be the villain, because he's Von Karma. <laughs> See, uh, they made him so clearly a villain. Yeah. Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? I don't know. Just tell me if you recognize the fucking handwriting or not. I'm, ha I'm giving you names. Old man. Bro. You're the one who says you recognize the handwriting. Like, um, give us some fucking clues. Well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma, Von Karma. W wait, you're right, my boy. See? Gosh, dang. This is Von Karma's handwriting, I'm sure of it. Is Von Karma usually lowercase? Like, I don't know what Von... Like, when you have a name like that, like Von Karma... I think it means from. From Karma? Von means from? Yeah. I think so. Like, it's like when your name is like John Sun. Oh, well, like so, yeah. Your, your last name has Sun in it to imply that you, because it's from back when people's name, <clears throat> they had a given name that was their personal name, and then the family name that's like their father's name, basically, like they were John Sun. Or like Carpenter, like John, or something Johnson. that like something that reflects what you yeah, did as or, a living. Yeah, there's like job names, and then there's like dad's name names, and then there's like, yeah, like. Another variation of that is like von Karma, or or Ludwig von Beethoven. So like, stuff like that. So, oh, so like, yeah, like, okay, but why is so the von's lowercase though? Yeah. Huh. And it's not like a part of it. It's like a separate word. It's like a separate word, but it's part of the last name. I oh, think, because that was classified. I used to see it in all the time on court reports. What? But 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 that means the one who told Mr. Yogi to kill was. Correct. Manfred von Karma himself. Why would he do that? What does this mean, then? Why would von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? Dun, dun, dun! How the fuck do we proceed now? <laughs> yeah, that, that threw... That, like, messed up my idea. Yeah, that makes things weird. Watch, like, Grossberg just I, be I, mistaken about the handwriting. He's, he's like, he's like, oh, actually, wait. Yeah, he's full of it. Maybe I don't know this handwriting. This is actually a typeface. <laughs> actually, yeah, this is written on Microsoft Word. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I, uh, I don't know why you keep trusting me. <laughs> I've, I've let you down every time. Uh, pretty much. He's pretty, uh, yeah. I mean, he's given us information, but he, like, never hel actually, like, helps us. He denied yeah. us help with, uh, Maya's case. Yeah, also, I liked the memento idea. I, I know. <laughs> I liked it, too. If it truly was Von Karma who wrote this letter, then we would, he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edward had accidentally killed his own father. He'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. He'll press the point until the court finds Miles Edgeworth uh, guilty. Yes, yes, so, so if he Von knew this Karma, all along, why didn't he just say that? 
Why isn't that evidence he proposed? Why isn't Von Karma just immediately going after Edgeworth for the initial murder? Why does he? Yeah. Why is he making? Once again, why is he faking a whole other murder? Yeah, it's confusing. But also, like as as far as the question of like, why would he want to frame Miles? Why would he want Miles to go away and be against his own pupil? Like even ignoring the murder context of him being the guy behind it, we, he, that is still how he's already behaving before we thought that. Like, he wants this case fucking instantly over, like, in 30 seconds, like, bam, fuck my people, send him away. Like, like he like he knows the people's the, his people's the one being uh, prosecuted, and he still wants this case to be over as fast as possible. He's not, he's, he doesn't have the, uh, uh, like, Gumshoe and Phoenix and so on wanted, and even sometimes Miles in the previous case, for example, like, when they when they suspect that the uh, defendant is innocent, they want the case to drag on as long as possible, so they have as much chance for evidence as possible and to like come out. Like that's what that's how Miles was last case when he yeah he was helping us. But like Miles's mentor is like, nah, fuck him. <laughs> like instantly, he's like, no, this case is over in thirty seconds. Even if he resents him for ac for killing his dad, it was a an accident, and b yeah. he was a child. Also, c why didn't he do this sooner? But, Why did he wait yeah. so long to decide that he hates he hates Edward? Maybe yeah, I don't know when, when he found out or what happened there. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, even I'm, how, I'm, how would I'm he? just saying that like if we're if we're, if we're questioning him going after his men, his pupil with as the the murderer or whatever, like his motivation for this whole framing device thing, we do need to remember that like how completely unhesitant he is in the prosecution, and that feels that feels like related as far as character goes. Hmm. Hmm. He'll press the point until he finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no! Oh no! But how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's path past like that? <laughs> Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm. That I do not know. He was like watching him sleep or yeah, something. Yeah, I was about to say, did he talk about it in his sleep? Daddy, no! Daddy, no! I am his daddy. Bang, bang! <laughs> Yet I do. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. He may be seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What Wait. do you mean? He's kind of a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> it was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth at court, and Von Karma did win. But he didn't make it through the trial unscarred. So you're saying that if he doesn't go to jail for this, he's gonna, like, come for us next game because he's so fucking vindictive that even if he almost wins, he's like... I mean, if he, if he, just almost losing is enough for, like, a fucking grudge on the... a pox on your family. <laughs> Jeez Louise, dude. This guy's extra. We knew that, though. <laughs> we did know that. We did know that. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. But Gregory Edgeworth accused Von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was, the, uh. it was the only penalty Von Karma ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Oh, he made him lose a bit of health bar. Oh my gosh. Damn. Ridiculous. He's a perfectionist. So he's like... I guess I, I guess they must die. All witnesses must die. Next is the judge. <laughs> Everyone in that room must die. They saw me lose pff, a little piece of health bar. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> I was going for a no hit run. I, yeah. Achievement failed. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that. You see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Can he, like, self-reflect on a mountain somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, to go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. Oh my gosh. I've never been to Europe. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> I have. But Damn. <laughs> You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. Do most, Does she? Do most people, like, I don't know what the majority is and how many people have gone to Europe. Those were not strange vacation ideas, so I'm just confused by Phoenix's response. Yeah, I'm confused by both responses, yeah. to be honest. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I mean, there's there's a... 
there's all the Francophilia in Japan. There's supposed, there's supposed to be like a whole term for like going to Paris and having like the disillusionment of seeing what it's really like as opposed to like the fairy tale version that they expect and so on. Like it's that specific. I had like a really realistic idea of what Paris was going to be like before I went because I, I, I was thinking of like uh, Hemingway's like a movable feast and all this stuff where it's like it's uh, a hub for like culture. But yeah, but it's like it's it's a city, so it's dirty sometimes and it's yeah. gross sometimes, and there are homeless people like in any city. You know, it's just that's how it is. You can't expect it to be perfect. Yeah. The Eiffel Tower is um, it's eight. It's eight. It's eight. It's eight. I'm you know, it's okay. <laughs> the line is really long to get up there. It <laughs> takes you like several hours to get up to the top. Everyone, it's it's graffitied the fuck up there too. People wrote their yeah, names all over it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Sharpies everywhere. Mm -hmm. That was the only time we took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up DL6, so you can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to DL6? I won't let him. Er, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. Um... I know that. Yeah, but it's not, it's not like, punished the same way. Yeah, that's not a motive. It's, I, it's not a purpose. I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. He was also underage. Yeah. Really, it's weird that... They just had... I mean, I think at that point, it's actually like a negligence thing, because you just sort of like had a loaded gun with a child and they let them and they got a hold of it there's like somebody i think one of the adults is responsible in that situation is how that works yeah tech i mean technically so i mean like no one would really go to jail for murder but you're right that one guy would yeah. probably get fired at least no, fired like, like, for if negligence. like if like there's cases where like parents have a gun in the house it's loaded and not like secured and, and locked away in a safe properly and then like 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 their one of their sons like shoots their brother or something and like i think the parents are the ones that get charged in that kind of situation yeah not like the kid no no the kid doesn't get charged at all but yeah but it's also kind of like a the court kind of just looks at it and goes like well this is sad <laughs> yeah it, it, it kind of all like, like it's just like oh you know like it's not really much else punishment we can do at this point yeah but there's a yeah, I think the adults get something. They get a, I think they get like a slap, but it's I like... If, I don't know if it's that. I think it might be pretty bad. In the parents' case, I think you can actually get your kids taken away. Well, no, there are those people that let their kids... They do like that dumb, uh, pray away or terrible disease. And they get, they go through several kids before they get their kids taken away. There have been oh, times where they, they lose like three kids. And then, then the court's like, you can't do that again. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's hard. I think it's harder than you think it is. Yeah, your kids that's, that's away. also in a weird, uncomfortable place for America, where they're like, "Oh no, they're killing all their kids, but religious freedom. I don't know what to do about." Yeah, this. it's and like it's like, like uh, take them, take the kids away because they're killing their kids. There was a great story about a girl who ended up getting. I don't remember what illness she got, but she didn't get vaccinated as a kid, and as a result, she got some sort of illness that permanently affected like her ability to function like her motor function and her speech and so when she became an adult she sued her parents god damn for uh not vaccinating her when she was a child so she's like waited until she got old enough and then she was like lawsuit damn. and they, i think they actually got i think it, it, she, i think she, she won she, she should win yeah because they affected her life forever That's because of their bad decisions negligence right there yeah i can't believe he'd kill someone but but nick Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. From beyond the grave! Ooh, so I don't okay. care. I know he's not guilty. Even if he's literally guilty, as we just said. I was gonna say, it's okay if he's guilty. It's still it's not his fault, Nick. Like, don't take it personally. In this universe, this is all murder is murder, apparently. M Mr. Wright, if you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest, like how he was killed with like a a, a, sword. a meatball sub. <laughs> a meatball sub. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grossberg, thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. 
Well, can't we the just go look? materials. Hmm. Can we just go there ourselves and not trust him? I would certainly like to try.